Hi, this is the second video about uh, Megasplats, which is a new series of shaders I'm working on. Um, uh, basically, uh, last week what I talked about was uh, the first shader I'd written for this, which allowed for, uh, and let's move over here, it allows for macro texturing, detail texturing, and uh, up to 256 uh, textures with flow mapping all blended together with uh, height LARP information. Um, so you basically paint on the vertices and you can blend all these textures together, uh, up to 256 of them, uh, while still being performant. And, uh, so I worked a lot on getting a lot more features into this. Uh, it's pretty complete at this point, but while I was doing it, I had an idea for another technique. So one of the downsides of this other technique is that you paint a, a texture for each vertex. And so, you know, it'll blend, as you can see here, it blends between this rock over here in this lava texture, and it does a really nice blend using the height maps, uh, but each vertice can only be one texture in this technique. Um, so if you have a really high-res uh, mesh, then you can't just paint like a little bit of, you know, one of your textures in to just kind of get it in the gravel and, and then blend it out again. You have to sort of go fully to that texture before it will uh, go to another one. Um, so this can uh, have some downsides compared to traditional splat mapping. Um, but while I was working on this, I thought of a way to actually um, blend together textures uh, when you're splat mapping. Um, and the way this works is that you still have um, one uh, value per vertex, but you, uh, you have two layers of one value per vertex. So what you can do is you can paint on the bottom layer. So if I just select this texture and hit fill, I can paint this down on the bottom layer and have this single um, single texture down here. And then if I were to paint some other texture, you can see it will uh, work like the other splat map uh, to, uh, shader, which is to basically uh, for each vertex just gets one value. But what I can do is I can switch to one of the other layers, and it doesn't really matter, they're, they're called top and bottom right now, but they're really just one and two. Um, so I can select that texture, and now I can bring it in kind of like a traditional splat map painter. Um, and this, of course, looks better if you have, you know, little rocks and stuff coming in. Um, but you actually have a, a opacity there that you can play with, and you can sort of blend between these two textures um, like you would in a normal splat map painter. Um, so... I'm still working on uh, the shader and the whole system for it a lot, but uh, it's, it's, you know, it allows you to get back some of the things that were lost uh, in this new technique. Um, that said, uh, I think the way that you'll end up texturing and applying textures uh, is going to be very different in this type of system. Um, so what I have here is that, uh, let me switch over. Um, so we have the ability to paint, like before, uh, single values into these two layers. Um, we also have a, a new noise brush technique, which is basically I can put several different textures into a brush. I can set some frequencies and amplitudes and a blend value for a noise function. And then when I paint, it will blend together those textures uh, to create sort of a, you know, a randomization of those textures with the splat map layers. So that gives you uh, a, a very different look than using one tiling texture. Uh, the noise function is actually going to sort of randomize the, the, the textures and you get this nice blending which makes sort of defeats tiling and stuff. So uh, I think what kind of makes sense for this technique is to go away from something like detail mapping where you're trying to inject noise into uh, the result to make it higher res or just using really large textures that are larger than you'll ever need. Uh, and instead go for a route where what you do is you define little materials that are collections of surfaces that get blended together. And then what you could do is, is choose those based on certain parameters. So in this case, I'm choosing them based on noise. Um, but to give you an example of how this can go a little further, if I switch over to the multi-noise brush, what this is going to do is blend together uh, two of these materials. So one has these two textures, which are very similar. Uh, and again, they're blended together with noise. And these three textures being blended together with noise. And then there's an overall noise that blends those together. Um, so if I fill with this, what you get is this really complex surface now that really has no sort of repeating characteristics 
um, but is all very self-similar. And again, you could go and paint all this by hand, uh, but that's kind of not the point. The point is to make brushes that paint uh, the type of surface you want. Um, so I also played around this week with applying uh, the brush data uh, basically based on normal angle and based on height, where you can set up sort of regions. So the idea here is that you could drive some of these parameters by that information. So uh, I haven't actually worked on this yet, but I'm going to work on it soon. You might decide that uh, the height that you're at uh, is going to determine how much of each of these textures to blend in or the normal direction. Uh, and then by playing with these top and bottom layers, you can get these really smooth and partial blends between these two uh, materials or, or, you know, many materials. Uh, because you can define as many of these as you want. You can just, uh, you just have to have, uh, you know, right now the max is 256 textures, which is quite a lot. Um, so if I play with this blend slider here, this is the blend between my two textures. I can paint and it's just going to uh, bias towards the other uh, material cluster. Um, I need a good term for all this stuff. Or I can paint the other way and it's going to bring in more of the other material. So, um, you know, figuring out how best to sort of uh, present this data and, and how to best make a tool set, uh, that's stuff I'm going to be thinking about this week um, because uh, just dealing with this information um, internally in the shader is really kind of complex, but then uh, presenting it all in a way that just feels natural to the user, I think it's going to be another challenge. Um, so I think this is a, a step towards that. Uh, I now have a system where, you know, you can get these nice blends that you get out of a traditional splat map painter. You can define these materials out of multiple textures, um, where each of these textures is, is sort of bringing another, uh, another piece of variation into the surface. Um, and then, uh, you know, if I continue to work on this, I'll have ways to apply this over a mesh based on uh, sort of terrain slope and things like that, which are uh, very common techniques for terrain texturing. Um, the other thing that's probably worth my time looking into is some of the uh, various terrain generation packages on the asset store that, um, you know, currently will will look at angle and slope and various, you know, other parameters that they have uh, to decide what textures should be on what surface. Um, so if it was possible, I could look into making those um, not only choose, you know, single textures, but rather choose these texture collections and apply them. Uh, and then you get these really complexly defined surfaces that blend together really well, and they can sort of uh, ramp between materials as they uh, change parameters and angles and things like that. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have any thoughts on this, uh, let me know, and uh, hopefully you're finding this stuff enjoyable.